So this episode is broken up into two segments. We do our first part, which is the introductory portion, where we talk about current events, our lives, and fun stuff. Then the second part, we answer fitness and health questions asked by people like you on our Instagram page. Just like you. Our official Instagram page, which is Mind Pump Media. So if you want to ask us a question that we can answer in an episode like this one, make sure you head on over there and look for the Qua meme. That's where you ask those questions. Le Qua. All right, here's what we talked about in the first part of this episode. We mentioned LeBron James and the NBA's social justice hypocrisy. Boy, is he under a lot of heat. I've seen at least five different viral memes. There's like a thousand memes now. Made with LeBron James. Apparently, he's in love with China. Yeah. Um, then Adam complimented me on my fashion. This is a rare event, by the way, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Time stamp it. Almost never happens. He's talking about my long sleeve Ever Henley shirt from Viore. Viore makes athleisure wear that you can wear pretty much anywhere. That's wear a that lot of times. a lot of wears. I know, isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, anyway, they are one of our sponsors, and we have a discount exclusive for Mind Pump listeners. So if you want to check out their stuff, go to Viore Clothing. Viore spelled V-U-O-R-I, so vioreclothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code that's listed on the page. You'll get a full 25% off your entire order. Viore. Then we talked about going to Tahoe. We're all going to head off to Tahoe after... We're done recording this episode to go check out some stuff. And we were mentioning how the air is dry up there and how it makes all of our skin dry. Yeah, that's right. We're bros and we talk about our skin. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Adam has been Say using something. Adam's been using a product from Caldera. Caldera makes skin products that are mostly wild harvested from herbs and plants that so it's all natural. And it seems to be working really, really well. In fact, I'm looking at Adam right now, and his face is amazing. Yeah. I wish you guys it's could see It's radiant. This. looks really good. Anyway, Caldera is a company we're working with. If you go to calderalab.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 20% off your first purchase of any of their products. Then I talked about my journaling. I've been writing in a journal recently, so I talk about the benefits of that. This is the manliest podcast ever. It's, I know, it's great. We talk about dad stuff. Yeah, we like to talk about that. Yeah. Adam watched The Lion King and was raving about it. <laughs> it's kind of Again, manly. Manly stuff. We talked about how uh, some companies are using artificial intelligence to supervise their employees. That sucks. And uh. then we talked about the uh, Lane Norton post on branch amino acids and how I like to have fun. And poke at that guy. He's a good friend of ours. Yeah. Um, and then we got to the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, what is your opinion on incorporating AMRAP and EMOM sets into your daily workouts? If you're confused, yeah. don't feel bad. Those are just acronyms that mean uh, as many it's reps. Just like ding dong. <laughs> as many reps as possible and uh, every minute on the minute. Uh, so anyway, these are uh, techniques to improve the intensity or increase the intensity of your workouts. Don't worry. We explain it all in the episode. The next question, this person has lots of shoulder pain when they bench press, so they want to know if there's exercises that work the chest without hurting the shoulders. Uh, we talk a lot about mobility there, how to get his shoulders mm. to stop hurting. Get to the root. The next question, uh, this person wants to know, look, when I'm getting back into shape, where does mobility play a role? Should I work on mobility now? Should I work on it later? Well, the short answer is always work on mobility. Forever. But we explain it into detail in that part of the episode. And the final questions. What are the best methods for fat loss for people who are 80 and over in terms of age? So people in advanced age. So all of you uh, old timers listening to this podcast right now, <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. Two of you, maybe. Good stuff. Um, also, this month, MAPS Anabolic, this is our most popular fitness program. So it's a, it's a complete workout program. Tells you what exercises to do, how many reps to do, how many sets to do. It's got videos demonstrating the exercises. This program is by far our most popular fitness program. It's great for sculpting the body, getting stronger, and speeding up the metabolism. If you're somebody who's uh, just neat, just wants to burn more calories naturally, you hate having to do tons of cardio to burn more calories, this is a great program for that. Well, that program is 50% off, so it's half off. This is the only time all year long that we're going to do this type of a promotion for MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsred.com. That's M-A-P-S-R-E-D.com. And use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space for the discount.
Sports. <laughs> it's like sports. Hey, only when politics sports. get involved. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah now it's interesting. Now yeah. it's interesting. I've never heard you bring up LeBron James <laughs> ever so many times. Hey, in wa- a row. watch how much I learn about the NBA in like two I, weeks. I know, yeah. dude. This guy's like, you gonna have all his stats. All of a sudden, all he's all into like, it. I'm gonna be like, it's yeah. it's no different than 1978 when the Knicks played. You know, this <laughs> yeah. shit. You know, he's yeah. like, whoa. I actually, it's just like Dr. J when he went up. You know, <laughs> I him. actually want you, and I and I know you because I I I I just think that. You you're like you're like where we're a lot alike is there's once we get into something then and it like sparks like oh I really enjoyed that you go full on I'm going to introduce you to ESPN's thirty for Mm thirties where they do these documentaries on like players they do such a good job oh bro you can't some of them you can't watch and not just like fucking fall in love with the person and want to know everything about their career they're brilliantly done yeah they're brilliantly done they're extremely entertaining and. Yeah. I'll go back and rewatch some that are just awesome, dude. Yeah, that are but so- right now, he's LeBron James in particular is getting just he's getting roasted, dude. Oh man, so many memes out there. I don't. Just I, popping I, I, I don't feel sorry in the slightest bit, dude. No. And I'm here's the thing. I'm a LeBron James basketball fan. Oh, anybody who's yeah, listened to the dude. show for like, longer than three months. He's one of the GOATs. Yeah, you, that's all you've ever said. Yeah. You I love the guy. Yeah, I, I think that he's I think he's the greatest player ever, and I it, it's very close between him and Michael Jordan, and I can make arguments for both sides, but no doubt he's in that discussion. Yeah. He's incredible. Uh, but I, I've, I don't like his political stances i don't like him getting involved in politics whatsoever i've never liked any of my athletes getting it anybody who i follow as an athlete i follow you because you're an athlete yeah. not because of your political views whatsoever <laughs> so when they get in there and they start doing that i'm like oh, i don't you're ruining it for me right yeah. now i like you so much and you say stupid shit and so seeing him get lambasted well, right he now, set, he set himself up for that because once you come out uh, as a you know uh, a social social justice whatever you want to call it, warrior, or you speak out. And then you speak out against people who don't speak out because he's been known to say things like staying silent during times like this is, is as bad as as you know being a part of it and you know, kind of calling a lot of people out. So when you do that, you, you set yourself up um, and now you have to hold yourself to a certain standard. Right. And then you have, you know, he's he literally basically tweeted against somebody who's pro-democracy in Hong Kong. And I mean, democracy is, that's as American as anything that exists. And that's a good thing for everybody. I don't care where you're from. Who, right, left, right, yeah. doesn't matter. Where you you, you, you got to support people's right to be free. Um, and, and But see, the problem again is that he set himself up so poorly before. Now we're into this stage. He could have kept his mouth shut, is what he could have done. That, yeah, that's the best. If he thing. said nothing, he would have been better off, but yeah. he didn't. He went against, I forgot who it was, but he went against that guy. So now that it's, it's making, and then the NBA on top of it is kind of, because the NBA is taking stances too. I don't remember where it was, but the NBA kind of said, hey, we're not going to have games here anymore unless they change some kind of policy. I don't remember what state it was in the US. They've had stances like this in the past. Hmm. But now when China, which, there isn't a state in the U.S. that is even comes close to the oppression that the the that China does. China's communist. They control a lot of aspects of people's lives. You will literally go to jail for saying the wrong things. So if you if you stand for against your oppression, you got to kind of be consistent. But and then the NBA is not because China is a powerhouse with with money. Yeah. So they just look like huge hypocrites. So. You go in the meme world, which today's memes are yesterday's same thing as yesterday's political cartoons. Oh, yeah. They're destroying LeBron. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Did you see the ones where he's uh, uh, the, the, someone? They're selling T-shirts of him in like yeah, the dude. communist uniform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and all the Winnie Pooh, Winnie the Pooh memes with oh, him. Like, oh, man. I never have heard that before until Sal brought that up I, the other day, dude. I, I was <laughs> still laughing about that after you brought that up. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. that he gets mad about that, like that reference. It's you know what like, I? Yeah, now you're gonna double down. You know, of you, course. You know what I love about America is is uh, as dysfunctional as we can come across sometimes. Here's what I love about America. The second you tell us we can't do something, it's a, we're doing it times a million. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like the second That's why everybody hates us. Oh, the second the Chinese <laughs> oh. prime minister said, "Don't com- if you compare me to Winnie the Pooh or whatever, it's illegal." 
Americans are like, really? Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. It was interesting. I, I remember even, too, uh, remember with, with the uh, um, the political cartoons with Muhammad and how, like, you know, volatile that mm. was. And they, so in Texas, they actually had, like, uh, everybody, like, did paintings of Muhammad. And, like, they, they made it a thing because of the fact, because it was, like, the untouchable. Right? Yes. So it was like, no. Everything is fair game. And so that became a thing. And that was, I remember, I was like, oh, wow, that was bold. That took some balls. Yeah, rebellion. I mean, you, and it did, I mean, look, here's the deal. We could, you, people could be offensive. They could do stupid shit. But so whether you agree with it or not isn't the point. I think the point is we were born from being fucking yeah. rebels. Like, yeah, that's we are, it. We, it's a rebel country. It's 100%. What do you want? Yeah, the second you're, you know, we could all disagree. And that's the best part, too. We all hate each other, disagree. Ah, I hate you. I hate you. Someone from the outside tells us something not to do something. Everybody bands together. Yeah. Fuck you. We're all going to do it. it. It's it's even like, it's literally like you said, born into us. Like it's, do you, you, you brought this up a while back. Like it's just in our uh, nature as the generation that comes up, like the kids right now are rebelling against the culture that's happening right now. It's just, a, and that'll happen again. Like every decade you see this where it's, it's a, it's, if you, if you look at the, obviously we were, we were born of rebellion against England, right? So we revolted against them. So that's where it started. Then the, then the, the States and the colonies, you know, they needed to m make sure that the federal government didn't tell them what to do. Then you had the South and the North rebelling against each other. Then you had a country where, Immigrants from all over the world would come here, um, and the and the only thing they had in common uh, was uh, maybe some religion. There were a lot of Christians that came here, but a lot of a lot of different religions. But the main thing they had in common was they all uh, valued freedom, and so they all came here. Think about how crazy that was coming to a country you don't speak the language, you don't have any roots. There's zero guarantees aside from the fact that you can kind of build your own business and do what you want. You're leaving your home. And that's the kind of people that this country attracted. And so what you have is this huge melting pot of different ideas and stuff. And it causes a lot of turmoil. It really does. It causes tons and tons of turmoil. But it also spurs innovation and ideas. And so as much as we like to complain about the stuff that's that's here, I mean, you got to love it too. You know what I mean? We're like oh, the... Yeah. We're definitely the poster child of of the middle. We're finger. the melting pot. It's it's it, we work it all out. You know, it's that that dysfunctional family that works it out at Thanksgiving. No, no I, totally. I, I love it. That's twice now that you wore that shirt on a day that I had planned to wear it, <laughs> and then you you I pull love it. it, dude. I dude. know it's a it's probably it's now become my favorite viewer. You have shirt. it too. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. That Do you have the same I, color. Same color. I don't know if they have another color. No, I think it's just black. It I, is. It's the what is this one called? It's the Ever Henley. Ever the, the long sleeve Ever Henley. Yep. It's form fitting. Yes, so that's why I like. it's fitted. It's fitted, but it gives you a nice V taper. Yeah, and you could dress it up or down. Mm -hmm. It's it's casual. I've wore it with my sweats before, but then I've also wore it with jeans, like you have it right now, and I like it a lot. No, it's it's super comfortable, and uh, I got I got put it on because we're going up to Tahoe, and um, it's supposed to be. I didn't really, I forgot that it's cold up there, and then I was working. Well, it's with, mainly cold at night, but yeah, I think it's been pretty decent weather, like sixty something like that but during the day. Yeah, what is it at night it's in the morning? Cool, right? like it's, I mean, it is cool. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us, yeah. like I'm like ah, yeah, you know, right. with the sun. But yeah, no, at night it's probably like thirty or below. You know? Yeah, I was working with uh, with Anne um, yesterday, and she's obviously coming from Reno when she comes down here, and she said it's 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 nippy in the morning and then at night, so it's like getting cold now. And then dry as hell. Apparently, apparently it's supposed to be. Bro, my when I go up there, dry. my skin gets so dry. Yeah, that's I. I couldn't live up there, dude. I was just up there. My lips were just like destroyed, like all like cracked up and everything. I had to like I'm putting all this like lip balm on and everything else, like looking all fancy. Oh, you know what this. that reminds me? We'll bring the the Caldera uh, skin oil. I bro, I you know what? I know Taylor, you know, put that on me, and I thought it was kind of weird at first when I first started using it, but I love it. I've already gone through a full bottle of that. Yeah, well, I can see a difference um, in your skin, and I used a little bit of myself. So it's all natural plant oils. When you look at the ingredients, you see, first off, many of them are wild harvested, which is probably one of the reasons why it's an expensive uh, uh, you know, product, but also why it works so well. Because when you harvest some of these plants from the wild, they tend to be higher in some of the active compounds because when you when you you know when you when you try to plant things and you reuse the soil over and over again plants tend to have less of their active compounds they tend to be less nutrient dense if you find wild flowers or wild herbs 
um, they tend to have more of these active ingredients, that's, and so that's what you see on the back. That's interesting. That's kind of like what you like comparing like uh, with animals when you when you hunt or fish, right? When you do that versus having them in a farm raised situation, uh, trying to mimic the wild in a controlled you know s- system like agricultural system. It's almost impossible. I mean, you can do it, but it's so expensive it's that no, very difficult. nobody does it that way, right? So what do they do with the soil? They, they throw you know, just the stuff in the soil that they know that the plants need to grow, but they're not doesn't have the same microbiome diversity. It doesn't have the same other types of nutrients that are in there. It doesn't get the natural fertilization of animals. So it's like greenhouses versus like out in, in, you know, outdoors in the open and getting sunlight and everything else. Yeah, so... So I wonder how they do that. When you go out in, in the wild and they pick all this yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yeah, there's that, places that they go because you'll see on the back of the bottle. If I pick it up, let me see. If you go on the back of the bottle, you'll see there's there's uh, many ingredients with two. They have two asterisks next to many of the ingredients that are all wild that they picked out in the wild. So like the, like the apricot kernel oil, you know that's wild. Uh, the alfalfa oil that's wild. I mean, there's a lot. There's there's tons of stuff in here that's uh, that's wild. The echinacea that's in here is wild. So. Probably why you're noticing. Oh, it has echinacea so well. in there too. Huh? Yeah, there's a there's a very interesting blend in here. Yeah, that's the thing about putting stuff on your skin. We for we we don't realize that putting it's stuff an organ. on organ it go it's the biggest organ. Yeah, and the stuff you put on your skin ends up in your body. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like you put creams and lotions on your face or your your arms or whatever, and you're like, oh, this is. This makes me feel good. Right. Look at the f- ingredients, dude. That's like that's how I, why I always have been skeptical about like using lotions and creams. And well, all these this things. is how I've been using it lately. So I've been using it like it's lotion for me. So I didn't. I don't know if that's how I'm supposed to be using it or not. But I it makes my skin like look just like if I've drenched it with lotion all day long, and it keeps it super moist. It it, it almost feels um, lotion gives your skin a different feeling than this. This gives it more of a uh, like when I'm in a, a humid environment. And my skin's got its natural, its natural. Um, what's the word I want to use? Not oiliness, but natural. Like it M- feels moist. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. What a terrible <laughs> I word. <hate> that word. <laughs> I was hesitant. To it was put there. You just there, sent somebody yeah, else up yeah, to yeah, say it. It's like, he's like you. You say moist. He's like, what is it? Uh, uh, mm, moist. Yeah. <laughs> when did that word become uh, out of favor? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody's ever liked it. Yes, you it did, I mean? dude. No. When we were, come on, bro. Every cupcake and cake commercial when we were kids. It's moist. moist. They show the fork going through the freaking cake. Yeah. Oh, Extra I don't, moist. I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those descriptors <laughs> that you're just like, it kind of sounds in, like, I don't know. It doesn't sound great. Yeah, it's disgusting. Hey, how's, um, you, lot, we were just talking the other day. Uh, I think, I don't know if Justin or Doug brought it up, but we were off air. Uh, and then you said that you had been too, is uh, journaling. Dude, I tell you what, man. Um, so I go to- You okay. sent me a lovely message this morning. I like you journaling. Yeah, you like that one? <laughs> yeah. Did you he get did. the picture? What? He did, yeah. He, he said, didn't send me. Did, yeah. you, I, did you get the picture? Yeah. yeah. It, get the, the file was yeah, too big, yeah, I, could, yeah, I, I had could, to Dropbox it. I could do without the nude, but uh, <laughs> I, did, I did appreciate the no. You guys have something going no, on not, over there. Not like that. No, it's- um. So it's so I, I see a, a counselor every once in a while um, to help- work through and process um, just some of the challenges that, uh, you know. I didn't know you were still doing that. Yeah. You know why I see value in it? I get a lot of value out of, of course, it. Um, of course. Out, out, of, out of talking with someone. A um, non-biased professional that can help you dive into yourself. I think it's it's brilliant. I yeah. think it's, uh, it's, you know what it also is? It's also a dedicated hour that I'm going to work on me. Like right. How often do you do that? Right, you actually right. schedule a dedicated whatever. But anyway, one thing that uh, she recommended um, was journaling. And I've heard that so many times, you know, journal. <laughs> In the morning, it's really good. I'm like, ah. What? So describe this because in my mind, it's like, dear diary. Yeah. You know, and like, I was like, oh, hell no. Exactly. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. how I thought. <laughs> okay. No, you know what it is? So I thought, so finally I've heard it enough times from enough people and I said, okay, um, I'm going to give this a shot and, and see what happens. Here's what happens when you journal. So there are certain, you know when you get a song stuck in your head? And it's over and it just keeps repeating and it's the same fucking part of the song. Yeah. Do you know what the solution to that is? Have you ever heard of what the solution is? I usually just think of a different one. No, that's not the solution. <laughs> that usually works. So yeah. science shows that one way you get that repeating thought, uh, that repeated verse or whatever out of your head is to listen to the actual song until it finishes. Uh, and then because it's completed, you've completed the loop hmm. and the, the odds that it, that it stops repeating is low. So what I found with journaling is if I have a f- negative feeling about something or thought, 
and I write it out on a jur- in a totally, journal. Totally. Because you're writing mm. it by mm. hand, mm. first off, it slows you down. So I'm writing it by hand. It slows me down. Second, as I'm writing out the negative feeling, it becomes very natural for me to come out with the good side of it. Mm-hmm. So like I could write the negative feeling and be like, fuck, man, like I messed up yesterday. I yelled at my kid. Like I, maybe I have this bad feeling about that. Oh, shit, I yelled at my, I yelled at my son and I shouldn't have. I yelled at my son. And, I just, I, and I'm not even aware of how I'm thinking about it. I just have this bad feeling about it and I replay it in my head over and over. Then when I write it out, then I can be, I find myself being a little bit more uh, constructive about it. Like oh, I, I felt bad. I yelled at my son. But you know what? I was under uh, you know a, a lot of stress and pressure. And then afterwards, we actually had a good time, and I'm going to make today. I'm, and I'm grateful for him, and I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to be with him. And you know what? Today, I'm going to make sure I, I I make it a point to whatever completes the thought. Mm. No more looping negative bad feeling, and and that just happens with everything kind of naturally. You become at least I'm finding them a more naturally. Uh, grateful and listing uh, gratitude. And then the, the other part of it is you put out there kind of, uh, whether you, you can call it prayer or meditations, mm-hmm. um, but it's basically like, you know, um, I, I, you know, I, 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 affirmations. Yeah, like I'm looking for the strength to stay, you know, on track or I'm a little nervous about, you know, speaking at this event today, mm-hmm. um, but I know it's for a good thing. And I'm, and it just makes you feel like you process your feelings. It's yeah. really, really interesting. No, it's great. Do you do it like more towards the end of your, your day? Like it's a reflection because I know for me, that's how, you know, I've been sort of uh, getting into that, not necessarily writing it out, but like going through my day and my thoughts and processing like what I could do better going into, you know, the preceding day. No, it's, it's, uh, I do it in the morning. I don't, I've never, I don't know if, if it would change if I did it at night, but I find when I do it in the morning, I'm now the rest of the day. And it's only, it, it takes me a grand total of five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's like, cause I've done it about five or six times now. Sometimes it's like lines where I'm mm-hmm. listing things. Other times it's like a paragraph, but I find that after I'm done, you know, with that 10 minutes, I feel like I'm ready to to tackle the day with the right attitude or whatever. Yeah. I didn't realize sense. it would be that uh, that effective. So now I don't know why everybody talks I about it. I had a streak for a while there where every morning I was getting up and I was I was journaling and writing uh, what I wanted to accomplish in the day. And then in the evening time, I was writing, uh, doing five things that I was grateful for. And when I was doing it, it was great. The one I just and I've tried it. I've got. I must have a stack of different journals that I think Katrina's bought me over the eight years because I was I get in this mood, right? Like I remember the last kick it was we had uh, Hal Elrod. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he came on the show, and it's like I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I tried to do that again. Let me try and do this shit again. And they all when they all talk about it, you know, everybody's it, you know he's one of many who have the, the, you know, the 10 minute hack yeah. to it or be you able know, it's just 10 minutes of your day or it's mm-hmm. this, that win your day. Right. Yeah. And I, and then I do it and I, and I start off for a while and I just, it eventually it, it always falls off for me. I can't seem to be consistent with it. Although I do think that when you've a- applied that so many times, like there's practices that are similar that I do, I just don't organize it as well. So you brought up like the loop in your head of like, that's, that's me at night, like every night, like I just, and it isn't, it's not always a negative thought. It's just a thought. Like, yes, yes, yes. we got to do this in the business. We got to do this. Yeah. In the, and it's like repeating in my head. Like I got to, yes. and, and so have I, to write it out. Right. So I get up and then I, I write it all out in my iPhone notes. And when I do that, um, it does, it helps me calm down. Like, isn't that weird? Yeah. Cause you get it on paper, you get the full thought out. You got, so it's like, okay, I can revisit this if I need to, or that's all I need to do is get it out. So I, I don't forget it again. Cause it's important. That's what I think part of it is. I think part of it is we create these loops because we, it's almost like we're telling ourselves not to forget it. Yes. It's totally what the it is. The second you put it out and you complete the thought and writing makes you slow down. It makes you more complete with your, th- cause writing is a form of, of thinking, just like discussing with people as a form of thinking. Once you write it out, it's like your, your, your mind or whatever, your subconscious is like, cool, I don't need to think about that anymore. And let me tell you, dude, I'm really starting to realize how many fucking loops I have going on throughout the day, dude. It's pretty, it's pretty. Bunch uh, of records uh, up there skipping. That's dad life, bro. That dude, speaking of dad life, I'm laughing right now because we're going to, we're about to go to, to, to Tahoe after we're done with this podcast. 
and Adam, you're this was before you were a dad, so I can't necessarily blame it on yeah. that. Like, but you are hilarious about you gotta leave it this time so we can get oh, there at yeah. this time. It's, <laughs> it's such a dad thing though. <laughs> yeah, just paranoid that everybody's gonna like blow it, you know. Yeah. Like, like get your clothes on. Like he takes go. so much pride in getting somewhere like twenty minutes earlier than, you know what I mean? Than before. <laughs> That's such a big deal for We you. all have you know, we are all very different with our different shit like that. You are this way with our your workout, your workout and your food. Like oh you God. are like we religious about that like we're going somewhere it's like is there a gym nearby i want to be able to get <laughs> yeah. what are we doing tomorrow morning i want to make sure that i'm up by five o'clock yeah so but i can can't go. eat before that you want to eat but yeah you can't eat yeah yeah i can't i'm not i need to work out yeah. then we'll eat yeah right i don't want to eat i don't want to eat before yeah. we go you work guys out. do whatever but i'm gonna you know not eat yeah go to the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. put this like wife beater on i'm gonna yeah. go there and we'll work out i'm gonna come back i'm gonna have this nice meal <laughs> yeah. you say it so many times that like yeah, yeah okay you're right yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're doing you guys are just so annoyed doug is like with the lights or the thermostat in here cracks me the <laughs> he's good. Well, he's got me. So today I, I walked in and I said, hey, did I hear you right yesterday? Did you say our bill was $700 for the, the electric bill? He's like, yeah, no, 800 and something. I'm like, fuck, I'm over here switching the lights yeah, off with him. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he, he does that remind does me of up. dad like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We're like, oh, no big deal. But it's like, fuck, 800 you bucks. You turn the heater on right now? How dare you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are the stereotypes, right? Don't touch the thermostat because dad will get pissed off. There's yeah. dad jokes. Uh, that's another big one. The lights turned off. The, the dad sneeze. Have you guys heard this one? This is a big common one in the <laughs> media. Yeah. I, I have that. Yeah, apparently yeah. dads have the loudest Oh, sneeze. you've heard me sneeze, right? Uh, it was I definitely so loud. Oh, uh, man. I want, I'm Jeff, not even trying, but yeah. Uh, you know what annoys me more is the little tiny sneezes. You that, know? The, that's pew, 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 okay. So Jessica <laughs> has the fuck out of here. Jessica that. What has is that. Jessica's got a broken sneeze. That's what she does. So she <laughs> broken. Broke it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> She'll go to sneeze <laughs> and she no. She goes. She goes. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll do like ten you know, like pat her on the back like get it out well yeah. so we were having a conversation and she's done this as long obviously as, as i've known her she's done her whole life and i'm like your sneeze is broken she's like what do you mean i'm sneezing i'm like the the object of a sneeze is to expel the irritate the irritant out of your nose yeah the fact that you're not doing that means it's broken she's like oh mm. so now she tries to like chew to let it out but it's still kind of broken you know i yeah. i am totally late to the party on this but I've been meaning to say something to you guys. I've now watched it twice in the last week. Uh, I saw Lion King for the first time. The original or the no, next no, 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 the new one. What'd you uh, think? Have you guys seen it? Yeah, yeah. it's fucking amazing. Ago. Is it? It's amazing. <laughs> it was. I can't believe we you guys never said anything to me about it. It was pretty good. It was, no, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it so really, good, dude. It was uh, really good. First of all, it was funny. Like there was like moments in there where well, it's just like the original. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. exactly like the original, which is part of why I liked it. I mean, it. I mean, what is it? Twenty years old, right? Is so it? I was, yeah, it's maybe even older, dude. Uh, it's at least twenty years yeah. old. So it's like I was going like, okay, so I had to have been 17, 18 years old when. I originally saw this, and you know the lines are like they're. I'm watching, and I'm like, oh my god, I remember the song. I remember this yeah. part of the the show. I like the original Scar better, though. <laughs> my sister said that actually. So that's seen in my preference. What's wrong with the old Scar? The newer Scar? He's just not as sinister. That's what she said. She uh, said she didn't like. He he wasn't as evil, and his voice. Yeah, was, I like his it. Voice wasn't as good. Mm. Yeah, I just like. That's the, funny. She made the same exact yeah, critique. Like, we, I, want, I want my villains to be villains, dude. I, I, I watched it with her last night, and you know, we obviously we we had little siblings, so we were. You know, 1994, homie. That's when the original one came out. Oh wow! So yeah, man, fourteen. Yeah, that it's was... hella. Old. That's a hella old cartoon. So what yeah. is that? Twenty six years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's an old. No wonder they brought it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you know, and boy, you know what though? The part that I was talk tripping about was the fucking graphics, dude. Right. Yeah. I mean, it looks real. I know. I, and I was thinking about as my sister and I were laughing. I'm like, could you imagine being like a, a, a five year old? Like I'm, I'm probably going out trying to talk to animals after. I see. <laughs> yeah, like if I you're know. five and you watch oh, that, it's gonna get like that. At some yeah, point, I mean right? it's it's that good. It's <laughs> that hi kitty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 like yeah. this yeah. might actually Simba. be a horrible, yeah, that's a horrible thing for that's kids. That's what was going through my head. I'm yeah. watching this. I'm like. This has got me fooled as an adult. Like, Akita can't... Matata. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Disney. My, my son thought he was going to sing with this animal. <laughs> yeah. I fucking ate him. That's what, I, that's what I feel like. I was watching it, and I'm going like, I'm like, I, I actually got up out of the couch. I'm like staring at the TV screen because it was like so, I mean, I have a, a, a really nice new TV too, so I'm sure that helps the cause, but the fucking thing is so real looking. You see the fur. It is, yeah. Oh, the, the grass. I mean, it looks so real, yeah. and I'm thinking, 
Wilson. That's got to get some five year old kid trying to go play with a warthog because totally. he thinks it's a, a cool friend. Yeah, warthogs will fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, they will, they will gut you. That will yeah. kill but you. But I, I thought they did it. I so I I just recently have watched the the, the remake two remakes that Disney. You did. saw Aladdin. Yeah, I saw Aladdin. Yeah. This one I wasn't. I haven't seen that one. Yet. I didn't like Aladdin. I really? liked it. I didn't. I liked it. I and maybe that's because I was like, I I didn't like how they did the whole fucking the, the so uh, made up song. Like, oh, I wasn't yeah. a fan of that. I wasn't yeah. a fan of like changing it. Yeah, yeah. They did some things in Lion King that were subtle too. Uh, it was. I thought it was really funny. It, it's. I, it's cool that Disney. This is something I, that I do. I think Disney does a good job. Like there's there's some uh, something going on right now. You know, in our in our culture, and you know this, uh, you know acceptance at all sizes and fat shaming. Like that's something that w it's been a conversation in the last decade more than mm -hmm. it has the previous you know two decades. And so there's a the uh, they do these little subtle things in there that if you know the that and you're watching it, mm -hmm. you catch it. Obviously, if you're a kid, you don't even pick up on it. Right. But there's a part where the hyenas are about to eat the warthog. And they they make it they're they're saying something to our, towards him and his response he comments on being confident about his his, oh, his, yeah. his weight you know yeah. and how how he looks I'm like oh that wasn't in the original no. that was a nice little subtle way to, to yeah. throw that in there no they do a killer job you know what they do really well that um, impresses me the most about Disney is when they use actual live action actors the actors that they pick are just I mean brilliant like. Brilliant actors, incredible singers. They have this likable factor. They did it with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Disney buys Star Wars, and the characters that are in in the the Disney owned Star Wars is you Star Wars is. I don't know if you can Star say Wars. Yeah, it's plural, isn't it? <laughs> they're they're just so likable. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just very very like the you talked about Aladdin. The, the the actor that played Aladdin, and then the actress that played what's her name, the princess or whatever. Such likable, yeah. Such likable. Yeah, I like to. Yeah, especially the droids. Like, there's been a few of them in the new Star Wars that I really liked. Like, even in like Rogue One, I really liked that droid. It was a pretty, you know, it was a good take. Like, I think they do a good job of like characterizing like inanimate things mm. pretty well. That's so. got to be a um, a pinnacle for especially for a child actor, right? If Disney takes you, it's like. Pfft. You're gonna be awesome. Yeah, you know pretty I mean? much. No matter what. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, who? What was the? What was the thing about AI supervisors you wanted to bring up? Who is it? Is that you, Justin? Yeah. No, I just saw it and I was reading that that was like kind of a new standard they're rolling out with uh, a lot of these like corporations where they're 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 spending a lot more money into uh, you know these algorithms, sort of like supervising, and so what they they start monitoring uh, the productivity of all the employees. So it's just like you know, gone are the days of like being able to kind of put things on auto and then go, you know, run around and fuck off and like look at Facebook and all like they're monitoring all that stuff now, like to the T, which only makes sense if you're a big company and you're trying to make sure everybody is like actually working. So it, everybody's freaking out about it because it's like big brothers, like, you know, looking over and it's not like. The, gone are the days of the boss, like kind of sitting across the room, and you can kind of pretend you know, like throw spitballs and you know do whatever. Well, I think I, I mean today it's got to be so tough. I mean to run a company where every like you know what company doesn't have a majority of their employees working on computers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Most most all companies, uh, you're you know you got you got multiple employees, if not tons of employees, working on computers, building towards something or whatever, and with things like. Facebook and Instagram and Google and YouTube. I mean, and you and how many people are in that dead end nine to five job they hate? And I mean, you got to know that that's got to be the most tempting thing to do half your day. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that before. I've heard people tell me that, like, oh, yeah, I work 20% of the day, the other 80 I'm surfing. I've read studies that say that mm -hmm. that's common. Is that, is it? Yeah. yeah see, I've heard that. I mean, but that's just me from experience talking to people, but I wouldn't be surprised if a majority of people out there working for companies find themselves surfing around on Facebook now, and makes YouTube, you, YouTube. It makes you YouTube. wonder how it's going YouTube? to... Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, cool. an, it's like YouTube, but it's, uh, <laughs> but it's from only Texas. Utah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it makes me wonder, though, how much that's going to hurt um, innovation and creativity. Yeah. Like if you're in an environment where you feel like you're being monitored and you have to be super... Oh, it's like the ultimate helicopter parent. Yes. You know? It's like, ah, oh, get out of here. Yeah, I, you, I don't know. Like, so I, I, I go back and forth on this, right? Like I... Just that last Latix, this last experience when I went down to Organifi. Adam's thinking about getting AI supervisor for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
<laughs> well, John, Andrew. I know, I know Andrew's looking over at me like, fuck it, hey, bro, like, no, I work my ass no, off all day. He's it. always working, though. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 he's I, a machine. I never anyway. catch we'll, him on we'll Pornhub or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I come behind him all the time, too. <laughs> I, every time an employee finishes a computer, that's the first thing. I just hit the P real quick and see what was last. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Dead giveaway, because Pornhub like, pops up right away yeah. if you do that. You know what I'm saying? The face will tell it all. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I got to make sure not to use their computer so I don't get them in trouble. Yeah. No, but do you guys think that we're going through just like a. Again, I, we, I, I talked about this all the time on the show that we tend to do this as Americans or as just as humans, I think. Uh, you know, the mm -hmm. pendulum swings one way and then swings back. It bounce the, off the edges. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, we had these, you know, cubicle type jobs where nobody talked to each other, staring at screens. And it and then we, we broke down the walls and we opened the environments. Now we're going to like an extreme where you go. Yeah. I went somewhere like Organifi. There's ping pong tables and fucking arcade games and like mm. it's dogs. Like, it's and, like Hooli. Right. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And so it's it's swung the other way. At what point does that become distracting or become a place where it's like, okay, Maybe we're we're working, and this and this does create more, uh, you know, creativity, but also create some distraction from what you should be doing it all day long, and you're still right. only working X amount of hours. Do you think that maybe we overcorrected by? You know, breaking the cubicles down, and now it's just like, hey, fucking like too much autonomy, and now it's like we're trying to like take our grips back and like be like, oh, well, this isn't really providing the kind of productivity I wanted. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I think so. I think it's a lot of experimentation, especially in the tech space. But there's another piece to this that we're missing, which is the the new economy, especially the tech, uh, you know, and gig economy, so competitive for talent. That part of the reason why they do that isn't necessarily to spark creativity and innovation. The other part of it oh, is yeah. they're trying to attract the talent. Yep. So if like you're a top it's like scouts. Yeah, yeah. So if you're like a top engineer or you know, you're in tech and you've you've got a great resume and you're, you're like, okay, do I work for Apple? Do I mm -hmm. work for Google? Do I work for the startup? And you go inside their offices and the pay yeah. is around the same, but you're like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Google gives me free food, ping yeah. pong tables and arcades, you know, games. I'm going to work over there. You know what I mean? They got a movie theater? Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm in. That's part of it. I now, think. The, the irony is, and I don't know how often you guys have been to places like this. I've been to quite a few now companies that have done this. Um, you actually rarely ever see anybody using any of this shit. I yeah. know. I've, I, it's just I, knowing it's there. I think. Well, maybe. Yeah. May, hold on a second. Maybe because you're when you walk in, your Adam, the supervisor or the big company we're working with. Um, maybe if you're one of the employees, then they're fucking around. With I don't know. It. Really, I don't know. Everybody's like, "Oh shit, he's here." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody disperse. Because I'm, I'm like, oh man, a ping pong Start table. Talking. I'd be totally playing ping pong every once in a while. But then again, look at us. We got. I mean, we got. How often do you throw the sandbags and play the video how games? How often are we playing the video games we got out there? Right. Yeah. Never. We, never. Yeah, never. We don't. No. That's what I'm saying. Like, I like having them here though. It's a. It's 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 a little ridiculous. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think I think we've everyone's gone that direction, but it's like, you know, are people really fucking throwing the sandbags? Wait, you know, know, you know what I think people use the most at these companies? What? Free food. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's what every, a big sell. Yeah, that's a big one. My uh, uh, uh Jessica's dad just got a job at uh at Google and he's Dude, like, they get and they don't just give you like okay free food. No, no, it's good. Yeah. yeah. It's and good. they let you take home. Yep. So that's that's a big plug. Huge. Yeah, Huge. That's big. I would use that. Show. Are you kidding me? And yeah. there's lots of different cha options. It's not like there's three options every day. There's all kinds of different options, and it's legit food. Mm -hmm. They did a smart thing with that, you know, in terms of tracking. Well, I've stuff. always I believe that the, they're doing this thing with the. I've been saying this for a long time on the show too. That like Apple, Google, Facebook, they're all building these their own world. Yes, yep. their own little world and ecosystem. You get, you get bonuses and Apple bucks. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> well, they're already made. You know, the, the credit card are, and the pay. And I'm telling you, it's all coming. I'm dude. telling you, it's it's it is going to come, and they're you're gonna it's going to be. That's how they're going to entice people. That's how you're going to get somebody who's making a quarter million for said company to come over and work for Apple because they're going to be like, hey, we're not going to pay you a quarter million. We're going to pay you one twenty-five, dollars but we're going to give you $300,000 of Apple money. You could which, spend on campus. Which you, yeah, which yeah. you can use on campus, which gets you movie theaters, dry cleaning, wash your car. Apple keychains. You, you could use it at our, yeah. our, gro our grocery store. You could or, lease a car from Apple Leasing. Yes. You could fucking yeah. Yeah, buy a house on our, yes, you know, our dude, Apple campus. Do or whatever. not think that is not coming. That is 100% coming. Yeah, oh, I, I mean. headbands. And, yeah. it, it's actually very, uh, it's not just intriguing, it's alluring. I mean, think about that. If they actually had something like that, that'd be kind 
kind of well, especially it, it, I mean, Apple and Apple's done a really good job of this of you know having the best or one of the best of like everything else they do. Like it's probably going to be they'll attract some of the best dentists, they'll attract some of the best grocery stores, they'll attract some of the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And so not only will it be cool and a, and a great deal because you're you ha you can use your money at these places, but they'll probably be great places. Yeah, they're already doing that too with like doctors, physical therapists, and chiropractors. Really? And, and yeah, and the like and dentists like that. Yeah, I, I one of my clients, you know, used to be a VP there, and that was like the big initiative was to you know really up their their care, you know, like and so that way you, you don't even go outside the campus, you just get you know your doctors and all that appointments on campus. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, and, and look, there is lots of evidence to show that if your employees uh, don't have to leave, if they feel like their lives are less stressful, because that's what that is, right? You know, oh, I got to go get my dry cleaning. Oh, I got to get food shipped for dinner. Oh my god, I got to. So, oh, but it's all taken care of here. So it eliminates a lot of that stress. Mm -hmm. Stuff like, I've seen lots of studies on gyms in, in, in corporate facilities. It wasn't that long ago. I mean, nowadays, a lot of big companies have gyms. But back when I first started in fitness, it was it was still novelty. And when we would do corporate memberships- It was so novel. That was a whole department. It was. It was a whole department and because a lot of companies didn't do it. It was a new thing. Yeah. But the studies were coming back showing that every time they invested a dollar yeah. in fitness for their employees, they get $2 back in, uh, in productivity. Less sick time, people working together Dude, better. Virgin is one of the best companies that figured that out, like right out of the gates. Really? Yeah, they went all in on you know corporate wellness and even made like uh, what they were one of the first to adopt like Fitbit and all these things to to help kind of promote like more focus on just at overall activity and like getting up and doing things and incentivizing you know their employees with that kind of stuff. So, well, I mean, cool. again, you you create that. It's a great environment to be in nowadays because especially if you work in these you know, these new economies, these, you know, these, these like tech, um, they're fighting for, for talent. So you're in a good position, you know what I mean? So it's, I mean, it's, I've said this for, for forever. I have family that's in tech and investing and I'm like, man, you guys are in a good space. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Pretty lucrative. You don't even have yeah. to be the best. You just have to be kind of good. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to crush. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, yeah. did you see, I sent both you, I think, I know I sent you the, um, Lane Norton's BCAA video that he just did. Did you see that? Did you see my comment? I did. No, <laughs> I did. Okay, I you guys saw, got cash, but I can't oh, really keep up with you guys. Really? I thought I sent to you too. Did you not no, get it? Or you you don't check your DM, so you don't check from me. I mean, I get a lot put of a hot, so. Put a hot girl <laughs> picture yeah. in the yeah. <laughs> Next time you got to wear something first. a little more scantily clad, Adam, and then <laughs> yeah. I'll pay attention. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, he wrote what he did is he talked about taking BCAAs for his prep uh, for nationals, and then he got hammered because studies show that branched amino acid supplements do nothing for you um, if your protein intake is high. So people are like, why are you even taking this? Yeah. So he made a video kind of defending it, and he says, no, studies are clear. They show that you know BCAAs don't build muscle, but some studies show that they reduce soreness and improve recovery, but the studies also don't compare it in terms of uh, comparing it against an equal amount of protein. So in other words, you know, what the studies show is taking eight grams of, of branched amino acids reduce soreness, but they don't compare it against eight grams of protein, right? which mm -hmm. is what you should do, you, mm -hmm. you know? So he's like, so I don't know what it's going to say or whatever. So I get on there and I'm fucking with them and I'm like, okay, so it improves recovery, reduces soreness, but doesn't build muscle. So you're just taking this so you don't, you're not as sore. That kind of doesn't make sense. So we're kind of going back and forth on on the whole thing. But no, it's- <laughs> Is this, he getting frustrated or no, are you guys just having fun? No, he's acknowledging it. I told him that I think he just likes to drink the fruity, you know, sucralose <laughs> flavor. <laughs> You know, he wants so to, tasty. Yeah, he wants to drink a tasty drink, but you know, you, you feel weird about that. So here, sprinkle some BCAs. In yeah, it. yeah, sprinkle it in. Uh, it's a little healthy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was a good Concoction. video. It, I think he did a good job of, of addressing it. I thought it, it, but again, it could again confuse people of like, oh, I should take it then. Like, no, you probably should. If not your protein intake's low, you know, if yeah. you're a low protein intake person, um, then it may it may benefit you. In which case, just take protein. It's cheaper. Yeah. Eight grams of protein is cheaper per right. serving than eight grams. Well, of the the irony of it, and the reason why I think I think we've taken such a hard stance on on against it is the the people that would most likely benefit from it aren't taking it. The people and the people that won't get any benefit from it whatsoever are the people that are taking it. That's yeah. right. It's the 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 bodybuilding. It. Yeah, it's the bodybuilding community. It's the people that are tracking their macros. It's those people. Are that that is probably helping them not at all. It's probably because they get the best like profit <laughs> margins from that specific product. Yeah, totally. When mm -hmm. you if you were to look at go in the gym and you know count 
the uh, eight eight out of ten people, I guarantee you, that are taking BCA. So if you go in the gym, you find you know ten people that are taking BCAAs. I guarantee you, eight of the ten people also are tracking their protein intake. And if you ask them where their protein intake is, it's, high. Yeah, it's high. Yeah, yeah. It's not even just low. It's like or moderate or at all. It's fucking high because those are the people that care about that that are tracking. Yeah, the just take to. protein. It's, yeah. If you're gonna take, if you're gonna like, oh, I need to take my five grams of branched amino acids post workout. Just take five grams of protein. Look at your protein powder. You see what it is per serving. Typically, a serving is twenty to thirty grams of protein. Right. Take five grams of that. You're spending cents for five grams of, of protein versus your dollars that you're spending for five grams of branched amino acids. Yeah. It, it doesn't make it. But they've done a good job. I mean, uh, you know, we've got, we've got buddies that I know that are that are promoting, you know, BCA gummies and shit like that now. Oh like that's because the, the whole eat sour patches afterwards Dude. is. Is the, the thing. whole gummy vitamin market is like humongous now. That's like everywhere, even for kids and and man, not, and adults now. I was just like, you're an adult and you're eating gummy. Well, I addressed vitamins? this. I addressed this in my stories <laughs> the other day that it's like you know, oh, what do you think about this? Everybody doing the sour patch kids or what? You know, the, the, basically chasing the dextrose post workout. Right, right. And you know, my response to that is what I said was, you know, in my entire career of training clients, I, I would argue that. 90% of the people that I trained had a hard time getting all the nutrients their body needs in a day. So why would I ever recommend they take 300 of their calories a day and spend it on fucking Sour Patch Kids? I would much rather them go get something else that is way more nutrient dense in their diet and will benefit them. Plus you're mislabeling something. So I talk about this all the time, looking at food and understanding all of the values that the food brings you. Some of that value is it's healthy. It's healthy for my body. Some of the value is it tastes good and I enjoy eating it. So sometimes there's value to that. There's lots of different values around food. You're mislabeling a candy by say, by taking it post-workout. And the reason why it's mislabeling is you're saying that this is beneficial for performance and health when it is not. Now, is it beneficial to have some sugar post-workout versus no sugar? Depends on the person. If you're an extreme athlete, yes. But in which case, fucking have some some fruit you know what I mean? Have some fruit. It's better, better for you. And you're not mislabeling a food, which what's the number one problem that we run into with clients is them learning better behaviors around eating. And now you're going to mix them up with this whole, here's the, here's a formula, by the way, if you want to, if you're like, if you're thinking about starting a supplement company and you really don't care, you just want to make a lot of money. Here's the formula. Come up with something that tastes fucking amazing, reminds people of their childhood, yeah. and then sprinkle something in there that makes people think it's healthy. Right. Done. So yeah. it's like vitamin C, <laughs> you know, fucking gummy candy with, uh, you know, leucine yeah. or creatine candy bars or whatever. I guarantee you'll make a shit ton of money if you do that. That's like the formula. Triple protein uh, hot pockets. That's it. Yeah. First question is from Crystal Felice. What is your opinion on incorporating AMRAP and EMOM sets into your daily workout? <laughs> you know, it's a, I like ding dong workouts. I, I, so this is my favorite. <laughs> Look at CrossFit really? and all their acronyms, dude. That's so funny. <laughs> fucking so F nine AMRAP. AMRAP stands for as many reps as possible. What's EMOM again? Uh, every minute, every minute on, on the minute. Yeah. Every minute on yeah. the minute, you do a rep. So kind of Tabata esque. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's that's like a hit Tabata. Yeah. So uh, here's here's my opinion on on both those things, and they they both kind of fall in the similar category. I, I, it's a terrible idea into your daily workouts. Uh, do I think there's some value in throwing a? a I, I've done an AMRAP before. I would tell. Let's say here it, this last year. That's another word for failure, isn't it? Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, as many reps as you can do in a set. Right. right. So, so how many times have I trained a set where I did as many as possible till I absolutely completely went to exhaustion or failure? I can tell you in this last year uh, that that was less than ten times, probably less than five times. So somewhere probably between five and ten total times in all of my workouts. Have I done this? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there's some value of intermittent. And I, do I do it? Yes. Intermittently, I would do it. Would I program it into a program every week or every day? Fuck no. No, it's like an interrupter. Yes. Yeah, and it's great. Uh, you know, but I think the, the rock steady and bebop version is a lot better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> these just, uh, just annoys me with these uh, acronyms. But yeah, I, I think that, um, again, like what's, 
what's your desired outcome? Like what, what's your focus? Is your focus on strength? Is your focus on building muscle? Like, you know, this is another one of those things that's going to sort of compete. And so if you look at it as like something that's going to compete towards your progress towards, you know, just specifically building muscle or specifically building strength, uh, you know, it's going to add an element of endurance that now your body's going to compete, you know, amongst those things. That's it. These are, these are intensity. These are tools to radically increase the intensity of your workout. And these aren't the only tools. There's forced reps and partial reps and heavy negatives. And there's all kinds of different techniques to getting your, to pushing your body to a very, very high level we of need intensity. To, we need to explain the studies that support this stuff because this is, this is where these people, I think, get the idea that it's good because they, they'll take a study to support training to failure and the benefits of it for muscle building. And what you're not doing is you're not looking at the whole picture. You're right. Short term, you know, if you compare one group to another group and one group is super, super intense and the other one's less intense, if especially if it's a short term study, you're going to see that the intensity factor is going to give people some better results. But if you extended that study and the people continue to train with that level of intensity, you would start to see their progress stop and maybe even reverse. It's the tortoise in the hare. Mm -hmm. It's the tortoise in the hare. The, the tortoise will, <clears throat> will eventually pass the hare. I mean, you come out the gates, yes, in a six-week study, if you train with, you know, training to failure every workout for six weeks and you compare that to another group that stops their exercises two reps short of failure – Every for every week for six weeks, the ones that went to failure would show that they gained more muscle or they burned more body fat. But over the course of a year or two years or a long actual study, I guarantee you the tortoise would actually end up passing the hair in this situation. Mm -hmm. And so, but do, is there value then? Because there are yeah, they're tools. Yes, you got to know you got to know when to use them. Right. You know you you can't you're not going to always use your sledgehammer you know, and your tool belt. It's not like you're going to walk into a house and you're going to see, oh, there's a screw right there. Oh, time for the sledgehammer. Oh, fuck, I broke the wall. You know, yeah. that's kind of what's happening with these tools. Now, I know why they're so popular. It's because when fitness uh, enthusiasts or influencers posts about their workout. Yeah, it looks cooler. Yeah, I'm not going to post about my regular, you know, workout. That's not exciting. Unless I'm you're gonna, Mike Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> He does a great job of that. Every regular workout. <laughs> <He> posts, <laughs> Captain regular. <laughs> oh, I like it. You know what, though? That's a good point. Yeah. He posts the real shit. No. Yeah, he's doing no, it's perfect. Hey, hey tease him, love but that that is, that's the truth, though. That, that is, is the truth. That is, that's that, why I appreciate it. I'm like, that's so boring, but that's, I love it. That's yeah. how he built his physique. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's boring, so when you're going to post, like if I post the deadlift, I'm not going to be like, oh, today's workout was, you know, 315 for... Six reps, four sets, you know, four sets of it, and you know, I got a nice squeeze. Of it. No, it's like boring. I'm gonna put like the PR that I did, or I went to complete failure and whatever, because yeah. you're kind of bragging. But then people get the 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 notion; it's a little distorted that oh, that's the way I need to work out all the time. It's not. In fact, I'll say this: the advanced intensity techniques should be reserved for people who've been consistent with their workouts and who are relatively advanced. For at least six months to a year. If you haven't worked out consistently, you know, on a regular basis for six months to twelve months, yeah, don't do any of this shit. There's it, no need. Yeah, yeah, leave it out of your workout. Um, you know, that goes for all the crazy shit. Yeah, like all, of it. all the 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 pyramiding and drop the cluster sets, setting yeah. and the yeah the drop setting and the circuit shit, like everything. Like it's there's so many other big rocks to accomplish in your your fitness journey that you should be addressing and getting good at and practicing and learning first. Before you before you start adding stuff, and most certainly, because here's the thing: if you're even if you're somebody who's within six months, if you did this once, not a big deal. I'm fine. In fact, probably has some value. But you doing this in every workout, or not every, programming it, or every week, yeah. no, ridiculous. It's yeah. it's not a good idea. Nope. Next question is from Thunderbolt. I've been having chronic shoulder pain, which makes it difficult and painful to bench press. Are there any other exercises that work the chest without using shoulders? You're asking the question. Uh, you're asking. You want the wrong you answer. You want to go around it. Yeah. yeah, that's not the right. Are there exercises that you could do that won't hurt your shoulder that'll work the chest? Yes. Are they going? Are you going to? Is this going to result in reduced? Are there performance? Maybe. I mean, no. There's nothing you can do. Mm, there's nothing you can do for the chest. It there's nothing way. you can do with the chest that doesn't incorporate I, the shoulders. What I mean is, I'm sure there's exercises that right. will not Let, bother. It won't stress. Yeah, as much. that won't bother his shoulder. But then he's going to lose strength and he's going to lose performance because he's going to be avoiding the best, most best exercises. Or he's, and he's not addressing the root cause. That's it. Mm. Like the real question should be: I've I've been having chronic shoulder pain, which makes it difficult and painful to bench press. 
what can I do to get my shoulders to stop hurting? Right. So I would take a break on your heavy benching and I would focus on shoulder mobility, uh, upper back, thoracic mobility, and really figure out why the hell your shoulders hurting in the first place because you're going to be avoiding some of the best, like bench presses and incline presses okay. are some of the best chest building exercises you could do. Listen, this is extremely common. Mm -hmm. This is very, very common because because of upper cross syndrome, okay, which is the the rounded shoulders and the forward head, which almost everybody has this. It's just most of us. It's it's like not it's it's you know a spectrum right of how bad it's it built is. into the environment. It is because we do everything in front of us. We don't ever do anything behind us. So of course we're it's going to train our body to be closing forward now. When you're doing the bench press, it is not advantageous for you to be in that position. It is more ideal for you to be in a retracted position to where your shoulders are peeled back. But that's hard to do that because your brain just tells you to get this weight up. And if your default pattern is to always allow the shoulders to roll forward because you're that way most of your day, and you get under a 200-pound bench press, you pull that bar off, and then you drop it down, your body just goes, get this bar up, and what it'll do is it'll push everything forward. But you need to be able to stabilize the shoulder girdle and keep it peeled back while you press. This is why we created a program like Prime Pro and arguably the most valuable program that we created. When you think, when I think of everybody, athletes, trainers, uh, your your advanced age clients, people just getting into working out, to me, that is those programs, Prime and Prime Pro, in my opinion, should be in everybody's exercise library just because everybody's going to deal with stuff like this, whether it be the shoulders, the ankles, the hips. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to find exercises that don't bother it, like Sal said, you need to figure out why that is, especially when it's chronic pain. And we're not talking about acute injuries. We're not talking about somebody who fell and broke their arm or, or tore their rotator cuff. Right. We're talking about somebody who, man, I don't know what I did, but when I bench, it just aggravates the shit out of my shoulder. Well, that's not fucking normal. That's, I mean, it's normal in the fact that a lot of people deal with it, but it's not normal that your body should feel that way doing a fundamental movement like a bench press. So let's figure it out and let's address it. Now, we're, we, we don't see you in front of us, so I can't say for sure. But more than likely, the point that Sal's making is probably correct. Uh, and before you go into benching, what you should do is prime really well. In fact, I know that I just did, we all did their, our, our Friday fitness tips that go up on our Instagram page. And I actually gave... Uh, a, a tip in regards to bench pressing. And the tip that I gave was uh, about priming before you get into that because of this exact situation, because I know that this is super common. A lot of clients of mine would do this. And I suffer from this. Like as to this day, okay, if I get into a bench press, a lot of times when I get under there, the, my shoulder is clicking and I can feel it like catching mm -hmm. and, it, and it, it totally is aggravated unless... I go and I spend five or 10 minutes priming okay, all my back muscles that are responsible for pulling my shoulders back before I go bench. And then when I actually put the, the work in and I do that, I get on the bench, I feel extremely comfortable. Yeah, yeah all the stabilizers, rotators, like, like if you're not expressing any rotational movement at all, like this is going to become a problem. You're just not going to track as, as optimally as you could, even though, you know, it doesn't seem like it's even part of the process, right? Because I'm just pressing the weight right in front of me. And all I have to do is this one simple move out in front. But if that's all you're emphasizing and you're loading that process continuously, it's going to stress and it's going to start pulling, you know, everything out of, out of track just a little bit to where you could counter that by just expressing more movement that your shoulder is very capable capable of doing. So to take the time to really kind of, uh, you know, go through that and, and, and figure out where your where, where the sticking points are, where, where the deficiencies lie is going to be like massively advantageous. If you, when you come back to bench, you're going to see a performance in increase. And also like, it's just going to stabilize better, which then alleviates the pain. But yeah, you got to go back to the root and see what's going on. Next question is from RC junior 1209. When getting back into shape, where or when do mobility workouts come into play? We are not working with a personal trainer. Yeah, m mobility workouts come into play day one and forever. Um, yeah. there, there's never a there's never not a place for mobility workouts. Now, it's actually maybe, probably a great place to start. 
Oh, it's for fun. a lot of people. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you mean the focus? Like, yeah, like, you most know, of the focus? like, like when this person's before asking, you lift weights. Right, 100%. right. Yeah, right. When you're getting back in a shit. In fact, this is a, an excellent place uh, to start. I tell you what, I, uh, if I, I haven't been in this place in a very long time where I'd fallen completely out of shape and I, and I hadn't been exercising and working out, but I, I'm, I've learned so much more about um, mobility today in the last or in the last probably five years than I had in the previous uh, decade of training. And what I know now, if I were to have started all over again or came from being way out of shape and then getting back in the gym, I probably would have spent the first month doing mostly all mobility work mm -hmm. and very little strength training. It would be all because you're going to get some carryover from that. If you haven't been training at all, you're, you're pretty weak and actually just holding your body weight up and doing mobility type of movements, you're going to build a little bit of strength. And more importantly, you're going to get those joints moving more optimally before you go into starting to do strength training and lifting heavy. So, uh, yeah, where does it where does it play? Fuck, it plays a huge role and should be a major priority for everybody. But it's most certainly for somebody who's deconditioned. Yeah, and, the, and the two re I mean, there's two main reasons why it's, it should always play a role. One, the obvious, it's going to prevent injury. You know, working on mobility is one of the best insurance policies you have against chronic pain or even acute injury from workouts. Now, the second reason is less obvious. The second reason is this, with improved mobility, and remember this, mobility means Ra longer or, or ranges of motion that you have control over. So it's not just the fact that you have greater ranges of motion, like, oh, now I can touch my toes, whereas I couldn't before. It's also, do I have strength and control in that range of motion? That's what mobility is. It's complete ownership of how you move. And that reduces injury, like I said earlier. But it also does something else. This is not so obvious. It gives you better results. Because I can work through greater ranges of motion, and because I own those greater ranges of motion, I'm going to activate more muscle fibers when I'm exercising. I'm going to make all the exercises that I do far more effective, and all of that's going to give me better results. And we know this through studies. Um, if you take uh, you know, groups of people and you have some of them perform half squats, and then you have the other group perform full squats, both under good control with good mobility – the people doing the full squats are going to get better results. They're just going to get better results all the way around, generally speaking. So mobility work, because some people think, ah, I don't want to waste my time doing mobility. I'm only interested in building muscle. I'm only interested in looking good, and I don't hurt, so there's no need for me to do mobility work. Well, the truth is if you want to maximize your results, then you should be working on improving mobility because it's going to give you better results. Yeah, it's so interesting to me because, uh, again, I mean, we always kind of come back to like a car analogy, but – uh, in terms of like having just like parts of the car not working at its best, right? Say, say like even the, the tires, for instance, are like low in pressure. And now I want to like keep increasing, you know, the engine's torque and like I get more horsepower and I get more. Like, what is that going to do in, towards, in terms of like propelling the car forward? It's not going to do a whole lot. Okay. Mm. So it, it, you look at your joints if they're not working properly if you don't have the ability to stabilize properly your your body is not going to allow for you know more force production it's not going to allow for you to then build you know more strength it, it, and if you do it's going to come to a, a headway where you know at that point it's it's going to become a problem where you, you're applying too much force but you can't handle it and mm. so then it's going to break you know what the irony is too about mobility work this is this is the, the funny irony and this is something that I learned as a trainer, you know, probably five years in. I know you guys uh, feel the same way. And any trainer who's listening who's been working with a lot of people has learned this, that the most value that you'll ever provide a client ever that will give you the most clients, will give you the most value where you could charge the most money, that people actually in reality value more than anything else, is your ability to keep them pain-free. No joke. Like getting people to lose weight, getting people to build muscle and get stronger, that also has lots of value. But nothing is more valuable than when I get, you know, Mr. Johnson, who's 43 years old, and I got him to move better, and now his back doesn't hurt and his hips move well, and he feels like he's younger and he's moving good. That's the thing that keeps him coming. That's the thing that, that gives him the most value. And the irony of that is we sell fitness so much based off of fat loss and muscle building. If we just communicated this mobility, you know, point well, I bet you we'd get more everyday people working out and doing resistance. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think if people really understood what resistance training could do when it when when applied to mobility and they experience it, 
they'd be more likely to stick to their workouts, more likely to be consistent. Because the weight loss and muscle building thing, you know, short term, that's great. But long term, at some point, you're like, I don't want to keep trying to lose weight. I don't want to keep trying to build muscle for the rest of my life. But geez, I feel great. I feel really good. I move good. Right. Like I think if we sold it right, the irony is that the mobility aspect is probably what will get the average person to pick up some weights and work out with weights consistently. Next question is from Alyssa Shepard. What are the best methods for fat loss in a 80 plus year old with limitations? Well, this is all on that mobility, uh, being consistent with mobility. The, the, the number one thing that I would focus on, especially with people in advanced age, which at some, at, towards the end of my career, I worked with a lot of people um, in advanced age, which I would, I would categorize people over the age of 65 or 67 uh, and up. Um, I, w- I would focus on getting them more mobile and getting them stronger. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this, regardless if they want to lose weight, gain weight, or whatever, getting them stronger does a tremendous, uh, has a tremendous impact on speeding up someone's metabolism. The greatest impact is on people in advanced age. I, I swear to God, like yeah. I can get someone's metabolism to get faster through strength training, especially if they're already inactive. But you take somebody who's 80, who's inactive, and you start reversing what's happening to their body with weights, all of a sudden, miracles happen. I mean, it is literally life-changing. We've talked about this in previous episodes. The difference between an 80-year-old that exercises regularly and the difference between them and an 80-year-old that doesn't exercise regularly, it's like two different universes. It's completely different. So the first thing I would do, focus on strength and mobility. That's number one. Now, when it comes to weight loss, of course, we can look at diet and, and all that kind of stuff, but I don't even touch their diet until later on. And the first thing I focus on is increasing their protein intake. There's lots of evidence now that shows that a high protein diet has tremendous benefits uh, for people in advanced age. They're finding it does a a good job of reducing muscle and strength loss, improving mobility. And this is for otherwise healthy, uh, you know, individuals. It also does a good job at just getting them to feel better and improve their hormone profiles. So when I do work on nutrition, it's like this. It's like, okay, let's look at your diet. All right, I want you to start eating more protein. Let's try having protein with all of your meals that you have throughout the day. Yeah, it's especially important to work on strength, mobility, and to also like increase their proprioception in, in terms of like uh, their body's ability to understand where they are in space, but also like to- Like balance. Just and- movement. Yeah, movement in general. And, and so I would focus a lot on- uh, you know, multi-planar movement and and making sure that uh, they're be able they're they're able to react a lot more because we're dealing with somebody that's probably you know this is eighty years of fixed types of movements because like you start like down regulating like certain movements that you don't use and so for the first thing for me is really to find those movements that they're not doing. And just just sort of lighting those pathways up again is going to do a whole lot in terms of the overall stimulus. And, and now that's going to affect, you know, even their cognitive ability is going to increase. And all these, like, benefits are going to happen as a result of that, dude, which is going to be momentum. Dude, I, I, this, I've seen this. This is I've seen this far more with people in advanced age than, than any other category. Getting them stronger, not changing their diet, they get leaner. Yeah. Just because... I think we don't realize just how inactive people get oh, after yeah. after a certain age. And so just getting them to move and build some muscle without changing their diet and then before they know it, oh, I'm getting – they don't even have to change their diet. They just start to get leaner. Throwing in the protein is just a, a plus. So the, the thing that I used to have to coach to my trainers with clients like this is avoid the temptation to want to just put them on a bunch of machines and do a bunch of bullshit exercises. Uh, it's, it's really easy to have somebody this age and go like, oh, I'll just, you know, we'll go over the preacher curl machine and we'll go to the little chest press machine mm-hmm. and just move these clients around the machine. Like it seems safer. Yes. Yeah. So it seems safer. It's easier. Like they can do it. They, you feel like you're providing some sort of exercise for these people and it's probably better than them doing nothing. But where I see a lot of value, um, and J- Justin touched on it a little bit with the stability thing, I like incorporating a lot of stability stuff with that age. I like doing a lot of unilateral work. I like doing things that I think that are really basic functional movements that they start to lose, like being able to lift their arms above their head. Yeah, mm-hmm. no weight. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah, exactly. No no weight. It could be no weight at first and then eventually be five pounds and then be able to, to do that. To get someone to that age to press five pound dumbbells over their head and then also balance on one leg would be like a fuck huge accomplishment. Just balancing on, on one leg, not right. even lifting anything. Right, yeah. or going to a split stance and doing that. Uh, getting them up off the ground, that could be
could be a, a workout. That's, uh, you know, three sets of five times of them starting on the ground, getting all the way back up, and then teaching them proper ways of, of doing that. You'd be amazed how many people that age can't even get off the ground anymore. No, you're bringing up good points. Uh, consider their limitations and don't and try to take off the filter of what you think is a workout. Right. Um, versus, you know, because you're working with someone who's old and you're working with someone with limitations. So I'll give you a couple examples of, of common exercises that I would do with people in this age group. One of them would be sit down and stand up right. uh, out of the bench. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes they couldn't do that without assistance. So then what I would do is I would get uh, pads and I put them on the bench to make the bench higher. So now they didn't have to sit down so far to stand up. And then the way I would progress them would be take one pad off. We did, we've been working with two pads now for the last you know, four weeks. Now today I'm going to take one pad off. Let's give that a shot. Mm -hmm. That's their exercise for the lower body. That's it. Here's another one. Leg extension with no weight. Literally, I'm sitting down on the bench. Try to maintain posture, Mrs. Johnson. Try to keep your hands across your chest. So you have to support yourself. Now lift your knee off, the, your leg off the bench and try and straighten your leg out as straight as you can and bring it back. That's enough resistance for a lot of people in this category. Here's another great exercise. I would have people stand if they had the balance. Sometimes I've had have them sit. Or so stand or sit. I'd have a balloon and I'd pop the balloon to them in different directions. And their go their job was to reach to, to the hit the balloon and hit it back to me. So I'd hit it above their head. I'd hit it to the side. I'd hit it down low. We would do that for 30 seconds to a minute. Then we would rest. Uh, or I would take a bunch of pens and I'd put them all on the floor and I'd drop them so on the floor and I'd say, okay, without shuffling your feet, bend down and pick up each one of the pens. So they would have to reach over to the left reach over the right. And then when they'd stand up, I'd say, now make sure when you stand up, you have really, really good posture. Don't overestimate their, their ability to move and what is considered a workout. A lot of these exercises, believe it or not, these people will come back to you the next day and be like, oh, I felt yeah. a little bit sore. I put ginger snaps up on a shelf. And like, <laughs> no, you did. Go reach yeah. for those. <laughs> no, you did it, bro. Yeah, they like ginger snaps. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. If you've been listening to this podcast long enough, <laughs> we know that Sal's trained Mrs. Johnson a thousand yeah, times. Mrs. And I've, Johnson and, I've, is, and I've trained Susie. She's a superhuman. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, Susie. And I, don't Susie. Know, I don't even <laughs> reference anybody. I was like, some <laughs> asshole that I work you know, with. Butterscotch <laughs> discs. <laughs> Weather, weather spoons, weather, you weather, 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 Mr. Weather's, weather, yeah. Weather's originals. That's what they are. Yeah. Weather's originals. Uh, they are. <laughs> Weather spoons and actress. Yeah, yeah. I tie, I tie it on a string in front of their face and say, "Hey, go get it." Yeah. Oh my god, you guys are yeah. terrible. Yeah, bands are great too. So I like yeah. using bands for uh, for people in advanced age. I think that's. A, but just uh, oftentimes you need no resistance at you're all. You're right. No, oftentimes, just getting them to move and, and just just think of think of all the basic things that we take for granted. Okay, that we do every day. Walk, walk sideways down the hall yeah i mean yeah. i swear to god that's you know what will benefit you if you're a, if you're a trainer and you want to work with people in this age group the way i learned how to train these people go to a retirement home well, and watch them walk around for a while yeah. <laughs> actually i volunteered at a couple uh, retirement homes and, and did some stuff but and we would do stuff in chairs so i'd have them sit in a chair and, but what i where i learned how to train people like this was i had an exceptional physical therapist that rented space in my studio yeah and she physical therapist brilliant at working with people my best fr my best friend was yeah. a pt and when i was just starting as a trainer he was also he was going through pt school and so I, he was actually somebody who i always would use for that because he that's they're dealing with people most people in advanced age and so the stuff that he would do i'd be like oh wow like he'd give me an exercise and he'd be like you know sit her on a stability ball and have her just lift her leg and extend the leg yep, oh, that's straight. Yep. lift the leg up extend it all the way out straight on a stability ball and i'd be like oh, i would have never thought of that and he's like oh yeah no they lose all that control on their hip and then you're just the way of their leg is enough for them. For no, if you're a trainer, their... if you're a trainer, see if you can volunteer with a physical therapist. That's Tell great, them you'll help a, them. That's great, actually, mm -hmm. advice. Watch them because I watched her for about a year, and then I started working with this this population. I learned a shit ton from a shit ton from watching her. Uh, you know, work with these people. Um, anyway, look, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. So we have guides on fat loss, muscle building. We have guides on helping you get a better squat. Uh, work out your midsection, your abs, and your core better. We even have guides for personal trainers and for men's health. We have a testosterone boosting guide. Go check them out, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.